discussion of the exam. The outline is there on my board. You can pull it up if you want. The formula sheet is also online. You can download the formula sheet and write your own formulas on that. But I don't want any solutions. Are the solutions on Blackboard now? For they are on. Are they for the worksheet too? Not for Not the worksheet. For the worksheet. You want so solutions for the worksheet as well? Can you do some, some problems from the worksheet? I, I can. Uh, I can do new ones. I can, uh, Are all these problems on the worksheet on the test? Yeah. Oh, shit. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. All these problems are there on the test. Do you have a, an extra copy that, like a blank one that I can have? Yeah. Just to do it again? Sure. Um, Six I questions, then. I can put out the solutions. It would take me until uh, tomorrow morning. Really? You want the solutions to all these? Yeah. Okay. If they're all on the test. Is there anyone who's, I mean, yeah. copied these when I did them in class and post them on a common place? I think there were some parts that you missed. Okay. So. Okay. So uh, then tomorrow morning. Okay. Right. Thank you. Or I can do them right now. If you want. Number two, I think. Number two. Okay. So why don't I do it right now and that save the trouble of getting up early in the morning and posting it. So I, I, will, I will come to that when we do the chapter on uh, on Mars. But, uh, so again, the formula sheet is online. The TA, and I've said that a few times, the TA room is being refurbished, so he's not in his room. He's in the Financial Studies Center, which is the room with the ticker symbol on the ground floor. If you want to meet him, just email him, and he's there during his office hours. And I'm not sure tomorrow he has office hours, but email him, and he will tell you what time he's there. I'm there tomorrow from four to six as well. I'm there earlier as well, but I have people coming in and out, so four to six I'll keep aside where you can come in. And if you have any questions, you can always email me, and I'll respond as well. Whatever works for you. Um, it is fine with me. If there's an emergency, you can call me, but please don't call me otherwise. And uh, it, uh, that's 210-326-3342. You can text me if there's something you think that can show up, you unwell. Uh, but email is preferable if you can. Um, let, let me go through and talk a little bit about what the exam is like and then go through every question, type of question that I'm going to put on there. I, I think that when I looked at the exam today, I thought it was too easy given that all of you have already done quite well in the first exam. And if, the, if it's a game that everybody is really finding it too easy, maybe the final we can make a little more difficult. Uh, and, and, and difficult, I mean, I don't want you to just think that, I don't want you to breeze through it, I want you to push also. And, 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 and so, uh, let's let's see how this one goes. First exam, I was quite happy with the average score, and everybody did very well. I was quite happy with our question. Um, especially considering it's very short, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks. So there are 25 questions, and chapters 5 through 8, uh, everything that we've done in class. And, and these worksheet problems are just illustrative of what you should be able to do. But it's not complete. It's not everything. Right? It's most of the stuff, the main ideas are right here. But it's not everything. And uh, so uh, it's 6 to 7.30 PM, of course, and then some of you take a little longer, and that's fine. Yeah, yes. Well, some of the questions from the, the bottom of the worksheet might be on the test. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I missed that. Because uh, that was related to chapter five. Um, chapter five was it? Eight? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was in the, in the bottom of chapter uh, in worksheet one. That's exactly it. I was meaning to do a couple of examples of that right now, and I don't 
have that would be on me. So the last three questions was on uh, equivalent annual rate and APR and, and, and loan amortization. Those were the three questions that were there. And I will cover that for you in a minute. So there are 25 questions. And uh, they are they're e almost equally distributed between the four categories. So around six from me, there's some overlap here and there. So six to seven. Seven from this, I think, of six. Seven from this, and then uh, uh, after that. So why don't I start with chapter uh, five and review it for you, and then from there on, uh, as we get to the bond part, I will cover the questions with you. And uh, and anything else that in worksheet two that you think is still out there, I will be happy to do. That. Okay, so let's get get to it. So what, what, what did we start out with? The main idea that we covered, so this, this bike is a little bit repetitive, and so you have to bear with me. Uh, this is it's too easy, or just, just let me know. Uh, but if you recall, we said in chapter three and chapter four, we wanted to extend that idea into chapter five. And we said that in chapter three, that whenever you look at any payment in the future, like let's say at time n, and you want to find its value at another point in time, that relationship between the single cash flow was that present value is future value divided by one plus r raised to the power n for a single cash flow. That was the main idea. Now I could move this formula around and solve for future value, in which case it becomes future value is present value times 1 plus r raised to the power n. I can do all this computation easily in Excel on your calculator or elsewhere. And in chapter 4, we said that sometimes you have many cash flows coming in through time, uh, and that is c1, c2, all the way to time cn. And I can find the present value by repeatedly applying the present value for it. I could apply it to every cash flow and add a model. But sometimes there's an easy formula. When all these cash flows are equal, then it's called an annuity. The annuity is simply equal cash flows occurring at regular intervals. And when R is the rate for every time period, then the present value of this annuity is c by r 1 minus 1 plus r raised to the power. So those are the only two things that they did. And that was basically, this page was your first exam. And of course, there's a little part on what's a financial statement and what is finance. That, that was the initial part. But from a computation point, this was the main. And this n is the number of time periods over which the money is in your account. In all these cases, we are assuming that payments start at the end of the time period. So when we apply a formula time zero, the payment starts at time one. So the formula gives you an answer one period before the first payment occurs. When you're getting present. And instead of present value, I could have evaluated future value as well, and there's an e easy part of that. So that led into chapter five with the idea on how is this rate quoted? How is it quoted in the marketplace? And that's where the text exam starts. So I think of the rest of it cannot be there. So that's the reason I have to read this. All this can be done. When the, in, in chapter 5, the, the first concept we talked about is equal, uh, equivalent annual rate and APR. And what I said was that if this is a one year time period, let's say, and I divide this into monthly intervals, 0, 1, 2, all the way to time 12, I take any annual period and divide that into some some small segments. And the 
if I say the mean hour for a month for each period is hour, then the annual percentage is the rate of fusion times the number of periods in number of periods in a year. In this particular instance, that's R and the, that is 12. So it's 12. So if R were 2 percent, APR would be 2 times 12, which is 24 percent. So APR is simply the rate per period times the number of time periods in it. And for interest rates on housing loans, auto loans, and all credit card loans, on payday loans, or anything is quoted as an APR. So if I say that the APR on my home loan is 6% with monthly payments or monthly compounding, it really means R is 6 divided by 12, which is 0.5%. So all my computations would take 0.5% as the rate of period. So that's the first thing that we need to remember, which is e, what is APR? I'm just explaining it. The other idea or the other main thing that is important is, well, if 2% is the rate per period, what is the actual rate I'm paying over the entire one, one year? And that's called the, you know, I'm just going to rewrite this, time 0, 1, 2, all the way to time 12. And if R is 2%, APR is 2 times 12, which is 24%. There. And this is the number of time periods. We call it M in a year. And the rate is percent per time, per unit of time, which in this case is a month, and so the APR is 24 percent. The effective annual rate is the actual interest I'm paying over the entire year, when 2 percent is the compounding rate. So the effective annual rate is simply the future value of a dollar put into your account for the whole year, and at 2 percent every month. So future value is going to be 1 plus the rate per period, which is 2 percent, raised to the power of the number of time periods. And I can subtract 1, or, or 1 plus the effective annual rate is that, or I can take 1 to the right hand side and subtract it. So in this case, it's 1.02 raised to the power 12, and the answer works out to One point two six eight, forty six point eight percent. One point two six eight. So EAR is twenty six point eight percent. Right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of so that's the formula? Is this this one? Simply future value. This is future value. This is the rate. This is the number of time periods. That's what it is. Is this idea clear to everybody? So what kind of question can I have? I can give you the APR and ask you to find EAR over here. I can give you the EAR and ask you to find the APR. Just like the simple future value problem, I can ask you what is the number of compounding periods in this? Given EAR, APR, tell me what M should be. Okay, so, uh, uh, just it's simply a future value for dollar is what the EAR should be. And so if I give you EAR 26.8% and you plug it in, you can be able to calculate the APR. Is that good with all of you? It's clear. And that was the first, I think it was a homework question as well, the first question on the homework in capital function. And that's the question on your, probably on what sheet one, I don't have it on the right here. Good. So you better get the first three questions right. Any 
any any concern? Anyone? Okay. So that's the first part. The second part is what is called the loan amortization. We did that again earlier. Let's say uh, the loan amortization means just you we talked about this a few times now already. Let's say you take a loan, a 20 year loan. Do 45 things. I'm going to ask you, uh, you buy a home for $200,000 home. Twenty-year mortgage. Monthly payment at four uh, at six uh, percent. APR. Calculate the loan outstanding, outstanding in 10 years. How much is the loan still left in 10 years? Uh, tell me the interest component. This was from your worksheet. On the Then he was 121st. Okay. It's exactly the same question as on the worksheet. So they have written down more than can be accommodated. In, uh, in, but you took a $200,000 loan at time zero. And I'm asking you at time 120, how much is the loan outstanding? You took the loan here, so you took 200,000 here. And you make an equal payment every year until time 240. And I'm saying on at time 120, what's the loan outstanding? So how do how would we do this? Who's going to tell me? How would we do this problem? What's the first thing they're going to do? This is the information given to you in this part. And I'm asking you to find two things. This one and this one. So what's the first thing you need to do? Find the payment. What's the payment? Who's going to tell me? What is the C, this payment? It's just present value for the annuity. So it's going to be 200,000 200, times the rate, which is 0.005. Divided by one minus one divided by one forty double over five is forty two forty. Right? Forty thirty two. Can you just tell you did that on there? I do have a cash calculator as well. So that's forty thirty two. I didn't uh, it, um, do it uh, in a lot of detail because that's I should do it. It's the one thing that is. Uh, uh, we already tested that in the earlier. But you could, what you can, there are two ways to do it. You can put it in the financial calculator and put in present value of 200,000. Rate is half percent. N is 240. Future value is zero. And you're putting in present value for an annuity. You can do it in a financial calculator, you can do it on there, you can use the formula. Either, any one of those would be fine. Is that good, the first step? 1432.86. Okay, so that's what, what the, so your payment is 1432.86. So what is your loan outstanding? Each one of these payments will have to be 1432.86. The only new thing here is that the rate is half percent. That's the only new thing from after chapter four. The rate is converted from an APR into the rate for payments. That's the only change from all the other stuff that you have. Okay, and, and, and so the question is, 
what's the loan outstanding? How would you do that at this point? So that's the first question. What is this loan outstanding? Right here. So is that when the annuity will come with mm -hmm. the annuity yeah. formula? It would be an annuity. So the, the, the time would go from 240 minus 120. That's right. So it's simply the loan outstanding is the present value of all the remaining payments. And all the remaining payments are these 120 payments. So it's just the present value of all these 120 payments. So the loan outstanding, I'm going to write it at the bottom right here. The loan outstanding at time 120 is present value of 1432.86 for 120 periods. Because 10 years from now, there will only be 10 years remaining. And so the answer is 1432 divided by 0.005 times 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 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 1 
formula as, but just, okay. It's just 120 payments up. So that's, is, is this clear? So that's the first part of the exam. Anybody? Chapter 5, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's continue with this discussion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and this is again from the last of the worksheet uh, that we had, and I did a few of these questions. Yeah. Um, what is the definition of a yield curve? We all, we all get that. In one Bloomberg, it tells you the rate at which the government follows the yield of maturity as a function of the maturity of that borrower. It's a graph. The yield curve is the rate at which the government borrows the yield to maturity relative to the maturity, so till 30 years. And it's around, nowadays it's around 1.75%. And the long term rate is around 33%. So that's 30 years. 10 years is around 2.96. So that's the yield curve, the borrowing with all rates of okay? And, and so that tells me the rate at which the government borrows. And I did this discounting at different rates. So every maturity, the government borrowing rate might be different. So what if the, I, I, I'll give a simple example. What if I told you that the first year you want to make 4% on your bank balance, second year you're going to make 5%, third year you're going to make 6%, and you put 1,000 in your account, how much will you have at the end? Who's going to tell me? The rate is changing, it's not the same. How much will you have in one year? So it would be only 1,000 over No, future value. What's the future value at 4% would it be? 1,000 times 1 plus the rate. And then I invested again at 5%. What is it going to be here? 1,040 present value times 1 plus the rate. And then I reinvested again. So I simply multiplied by 1 plus the rate. The rate is changed. That's all. In real life, rates change every time. Right? So this is future value changing. Is there an equation that says like 1,000 level 1 plus? So I'm taking a picture of that. I could instead write it in the way that you're suggesting. I could say, well, what if I told you that the rate for government borrowing and lending is 2% for this time period, 3% for this time period, and 5% for this time period. And I want to take present value. Here I'm taking future value. I'm saying how much is it accumulated. Here I'm asking what is present. And I say 100 here, 70 here, 900 here. What is the present value of these? And I did this so it would be 100 divided by 1.02. Right. 70 over 1.03 squared plus 900 over 1.05. Okay. Present. So that's the changing rates when you're discounting. This is the changing rates when you take the future value. Okay. The same thing. There's no difference. And I did these examples for you as well. But that's the last point. That so, future, 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 the present value is discounting, the other one is compounding. That's right. That's right. All right. So, that's the this last part. Okay, so let's quickly move on. I think we're spending too much time here. And get to the part of bonds. Bonds are, all of you love bonds. And there is nothing about that that's unclear. And so what is, um, what is a bond? A bond is simply so it's a loan that is traded in the marketplace. And typical bond has a payment called the coupon, I just write CPA every time period, and a final amount called the face value. So it's an annuity of coupons and a final amount called the face value. And they're all discounted times zero if you ask the price. 
that's what a bar is. And uh, so if I uh, ask you how to value the bar, it's simply this annuity and this final amount or the face value, which is normally either a thousand or a hundred in most instances. And this coupon is often quoted as a rate, and you've got to convert it into a dollar payment and tell you whether it's annual or semi-annual. It should tell you. And the rate at which you discount is also called the yield to maturity of the bond. I'm going to write Y. It's the yield to maturity of the bond. Now, this yield to maturity is basically can be quoted as an APR, and you've got to convert it to the rate per period. So if I say the bond's yield to maturity is 10%, with semi-annual payments. So that means, and, and I write it's quoted as an APR. That means I'm going to use 10 divided by 2 of 5% in when I plug in the formula. That's what we did in question 2 on the worksheet. So the price of the bond is just the present value of these coupons. And Y is the, 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 the yield per period, one plus Y raised to the power n, plus the face value over one plus Y. It's just these two payments. Let's do an example. I think that's the best way to illustrate that. So let's go back to question two on the worksheet, if you still have it. And why don't you try and solve it? But if I just do question two, if you have if you don't have it, it's it's right here. Ten percent bond, semi-annual you're confused, price. So uh Karen, which part is unfair? Part C is the one that I don't think we did. Okay, so let's next do that. So let's solve this. Why don't you take a minute and try and do it? And that basically uh, is the main computation. There's one more thing that I did. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I did that last right time. All I know is. Uh, so I'm going to. Everybody has this question. Or you have uh, the worksheet yeah, on you. Gets me confused. So uh, why don't I draw the timeline and illustrate I think this? It's one day, so it says it's a 10% bond with semi-annual coupon payments and 10 year maturity. So if I were to draw the so timeline on this bar, it would be it's a 10 year bar with semi-annual payments. So it's yeah. 20 oh, is yeah. the number of time periods. 20 mm -hmm. is the number of time periods of this. And uh, it's a 10% coupon bond and the face value is 1,000. 10% coupon means Payments are hundred dollars a year, but they are semi-annual, so I get fifty every week. So it's fifty, fifty, all the way to here, fifty in the end. And the yield to maturity on this bond is eight percent, quoted as an APR. So the rate will be eight percent divided by two. That's those are the main things to be careful about. So the price is. 50 divided by 0.04, 1 minus 1.04, or 20 plus 1,000. And you could compute this using a financial calculator by putting in future value of 1,000. Payment of 50, the rate of 4, number of time periods, 20, and computing present. Or you can just use the calculator to do this. And uh, the, the, not the calculator, the uh, Excel. Excel. And it's 50 divided by 0.04 times 1 minus 1. Plus 1,000. And the answer is 1135.90. That's 
right? So there are a number of ways to do it. Um, the second part of the question is, at what rate will this be a par bond? A par bond means it's exactly worth a thousand. And the answer is, it's a it's par bond when the coupon rate and the yield are exactly the same. So if the coupon rate is 10% as an APR, the yield to maturity should also be 10% as an APR, then it will be worth a thousand. So when y is equal to the coupon rate, then it's a par bond. When the, this is for the same maturity. So if this is 10% as an APR, this should also be 10% as an annual for the same maturity. The coupon rate and the yield to maturity for the same maturity should be, for the same time period should be the same. In this case, the coupon rate is 10% per year. So the yield to maturity for the year should be 10% as an APR. So 10% as 